What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Another episode on David CTR. On the last episode, you see a team removing the original inner cooler and upgraded to the PRL unit and it fit perfectly. On this episode, we finally received our parts back from ceramic coating and we can't wait to get those installed on this car here. Before the installation, let's take a look at what we got. All right, so what we got here? So what we have is our intake pipe to the turbo and our catless uh, down pipe over here from RV6 and the front pipe also from RV6. You can see the difference in finishes. This one was ceramic coated at RV6. These we brought to um, our local powder coater. What, what's that? Uh, DH powder coating. Yeah, DH yeah. powder coating in uh, yeah. Fort Lauderdale, Tamarack area. And um, they went ahead and did a silver ceramic on these two pipes that way we can try and keep some of our underhood temps down since in the front of these type R's there's a lot of exhaust and heat yeah. right in the front of the motor so the goal is to try and keep the heat down so this is what we got just, yeah they came out really nice yeah it came out really good not for nothing you know uh, yeah. very good quality product there right there well let's get it started oh yeah Next thing we're going to work on is getting the downpipe out and to start off we have to first we got to pull this O2 sensor after we pull the O2 sensor we got a whole bunch of 12s on here but this O2 sensor is going to keep everything in place so as soon as we get that out then we'll get to see what the stock cat and downpipe look like. So Mike, you're way up in there. What are you doing? Yeah, I'm trying to get to this boat, man. What do you got to do? I don't know, you can kind of see in there. Uh, here we go. Satisfaction. When me and Miguel have run into this turbo setup on the RDXs and other Type Rs, and we've run into a couple snags where we've had issues with these bolts here locking onto the studs yeah eventually snapping off and we've developed something that is not foolproof but tends to help it a works bit. yeah what is it that we usually do well we like to soak these kind of crack them a little bit work the bolts back and forth let it sit overnight soak them as long as you can and it seems to help get that bolt loosened up some and making sure that it's completely cold that that's definitely Oh, absolutely. That yes. stuff like that because these things really like to bite onto the studs. So, you know. You, you, you got mentioned last time where when, you got, when we were working on one of these cars here, when it has any type of heat, the studs, it tends to just break off. Yeah, it'll, it'll like to lock up. So that's why we recommend like, you know, at least four to six hours, maybe even with a fan on it, let it cool down. Or you could just go at it and snap the studs off. But, you know, we're not that bad around here. <laughs> no butchery. So what we have here is a PTP turbo blanket, turbo blanket, and we opted to go with the optional spring clips for this. It makes it a little easier to put on. Normally it just comes with some safety wire that you would go over these with. This makes it a little nicer setup. So this is going to wrap around 
the turbo right where it comes out of the head and it is a mixture of metal and fiberglass weaving and what that's going to do is just try and keep that heat again on the turbo and so it doesn't go out and heat soak the rest of the engine and we're going to throw it on real quick see how it goes all right so here is the comparison from an rv6 to the oem unit yeah so uh we can see the size difference obviously so this is where our catalytic is and this is uh you know it's uh it's restrictive to the flow so with going with this it's a lot more open the turbo will spool a little bit better more power better throttle response i think uh it's gotta be happy so you just gotta swap the original shield back so on we're to gonna here. put the the original shield back on try to help keep the heat at a good temperature we're gonna put a defouler in and that goes along with our o2 sensor so we'll keep all the check engine lights off and um, this thing should run pretty good let's find out what john's doing how are we doing over here john you know, like any good blanket, it's got to fit real nice and snug as a bug, right? I'm trying to get this into the spot so that it doesn't interfere with our downpipe and doesn't bind with the waste can, wastegate control and all the springs are lined up. So as of right now, this thing looks like it's set up pretty good. As you can see, it fits real nice. These are our spring clamps there. There's another one on the back side, kind of hard to see, but it wraps the turbo up just right and that's exactly what we want So we're on to the next part, right Mike? So down pipe, front pipe's all in. What are we doing now? So we are now gonna install this fancy boy right here. HKS Super Sequential Blow-Off Valve made specifically for this setup. So this is gonna replace this pipe right down in here. And that goes into the throttle body back there. Um, located on here is a few things like our boost sensor, map sensor, but the first thing we gotta do is get this battery out of here. That's gonna give us access, so that's what we're gonna do first. So we have a boost sensor here and we had to swap that over from the stock pipe. We had to put this little nipple in here. It goes to one of these EVAP pipes right here. On the Japanese ones, they give you a plug to put in because they don't have the same EVAP system as us. How do you know that? Because uh, the Japanese instructions told me that. And I got a very important phone call. That's probably it where the people were telling me about it. So, But other than that, now we're gonna go ahead and install it. Move on to the next step. All 
Okay, so we have the blow-off valve mounted with its special pipe on its bracket. So now it's a little bit of the tricky part is tapping in to the factory boost system over here to allow the blow off valve to work properly. We have to tap into the whole vacuum system over here. And that involves putting in T's like this and going and tapping some other lines. And that's what we're gonna get into right now, following these lovely instructions that I don't understand. But it's got good pictures. So we got this whole side plumbed back in. We have the uh, all the vacuums ran as to the instructions. Batteries installed. Um, so now John's getting ready to uh, put the uh, intake pipe on. That's it. This is the fun part. So everything looks like put back together. The last thing is, I guess, the intake box, right? Yeah, intake box and a couple little pipes here and then a few trims, lower splash shield, and it's time to go beat on this car. Hey John, looks like you're putting back the original intake. Whatever happened to the aftermarket one? So we had a Mishimoto one, and that one's made of metal, not plastic. And we were trying to get it uh, ceramic coated like our other parts over here, but due to uncontrollable circumstances, the company that sells the black powder that we wanted because we didn't want it silver, they're currently closed. So we have no ETA when we're gonna be able to get that powder. So for now, we're gonna be on stock intake. When that actually comes back, then we'll get it installed. We'll probably do a little quick video on that. Well, before we get the car down on the ground off camera, John actually did something special on the wheels and tires and uh, the brakes. Let's take a look at it. So uh, his tires were shot, so we threw some very, very fancy uh, Michelin Pilot Sport 4S is on here. Very good looking, very expensive. And we also went ahead and put some low dust, high performance Hawk brake pads and we resurfaced the rotors and repainted them. And we did that all the way around on the car. Look real fancy. Yeah, it looks better than stock, I'll tell you that. So we got everything on and we're going for our first test drive. What do you think about it, Mike? So I'm good right now. The car's still warming up, but um, certainly uh, maybe put a cool sound when I switch in gear. Yeah, it sounds like a little squirt. Typical, you know, turbo Honda Boy stuff right there. That was all. Go blow off. I know you say you always really like this car. I know you weren't too happy about getting rid of it, but you know. Sometimes you have to, you know. Absolutely. But uh, we'll get it back to the shop, get it all cleaned up, and uh, we'll see you guys in a little bit. The 
these gear blow valves sound really cool. And the RV6 down and the front pipe certainly bring out the horsepower on David Civic Type R. On the next episode, we'll be installing our intake and also installing the flash flow. Then we'll be taking this car to the dyno to get some real numbers. Hope you like the video. Make sure you hit the like button. And you haven't already done so, make sure you hit the subscribe button because you've got new videos coming every single week. Thanks for watching. We hope to see you guys on the next one.